Hi, students. Um, this video is um, to tell you a little bit about Enlightenment art as we head into reading Duguge and um, Wollstonecraft. Um, at the end of this uh, week's module, you're going to be asked to connect um, what you know about Enlightenment art with Olympe de Gouges and Wollstonecraft's uh, ideas. Um, so this is just kind of a brief survey of what was going on in art at the time, particularly in France. Um, if you haven't already, I really encourage you to watch the um, video about the crash course uh, in uh, the French Revolution. It's just 10 minutes. It's a really, it's really important context for understanding this period in history and this period in art. So um, last week we were talking about Descartes and um, Kant and the reaction to feudalism and how both Descartes and Kant were very interested in developing this idea that an individual can have kind of a private intellectual life um, in various ways. Descartes said we need to go out in the world and have our own experiences and form our own ideas. Um, Kant talked about there being private reason and public reason. Um, and this week, uh, and then we talked about, uh, in the last video, we talked about Diderot and his encyclopedia and his idea that all this knowledge could be put into a document and shared with the reading public. So this is a time, uh, you know, the 17th and 18th centuries called the Age of Reason or the Enlightenment Project, where there were a lot of serious thinkers. But there was also something going on in the world of painting and in art um, that was very different um, from that. And that was the movement in art known as the Rococo. Um, and the Rococo, it was a very um, frivolous art movement. Um, it was very much focused on being pretty and decorative. And it was a movement uh, embraced by the aristocracy, particularly in France. Um, and so I want to just show you some paintings, some Rococo paintings that sort of epitomize um, what Rococo was. So one of the most famous Rococo paintings is this painting by Fragonard um, called The Swing. Um, and you may be able to blow it up on your computer. Um, but I just want you to notice a few things about this. Um, in this picture, you may be able to see there's a woman on a swing and there's one guy over here sort of hiding in the bushes and over here there's a guy pushing the swing and this guy pushing the swing doesn't really seem to know about this guy hiding in the bushes. And you might notice that this guy hiding in the bushes is kind of looking up the woman's skirt. So it's almost like he and this woman have this private thing going on. Like maybe this guy pushing the swing is her official boyfriend, but maybe she's got a lover on the side, this guy looking up her skirt. At the time of the Enlightenment, swings, women on swings um, were seen as uh, pretty sexual. Um, and there were even women who performed on swings and, you know, the idea being that they, when they were swinging, men could look up her skirt and it was seen as really racy. Um, so uh, this picture uh, was sort of seen as, you know, very risque. Um, uh, her shoe was flying off as she's swinging, which was shocking. The idea of a woman's foot being exposed would have been really shocking at that time. And then there's light in the picture. You can see maybe it's moonlight, um, but it's sort of overshadowed by this dark sort of forest. So there's this sense of these kind of primal forces at work in this picture. Um, and that was very typical of Rococo art. Um, let me see what else I need to tell you about this before we moved on. Just to know, Fragonard um, 
was pretty relatively apolitical. He was very different from some of the writers and thinkers uh, were reading or thinking about um, in this unit. He actually ended up fleeing during the French Revolution to survive because he had a really strong connection to the aristocracy. Um, and if he had stayed, he might have gotten the guillotine. Um, Fragonard doesn't argue publicly about politics. He's not involved in big weighty discussions. Diderot hated Fragonard. He was always making fun of Fragonard. Um, so uh, Fragonard was very much kind of an insider in the French court. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Okay, so let's move on to another piece of um, uh, Rococo art. This is called The Odalisk by Francois Boucher, another uh, Rococo painter. Um, this also was seen as very scandalous, not surprising. We don't normally see somebody's bare buttocks uh, in a painting and it was pretty shocking um, at the time. The woman in this painting is wearing kind of a typical Turkish uh, hairstyle. She is probably a woman in a harem. Uh, you can see this picture is like uh, kind of, you know, uh, the bed is sort of disheveled. She's half naked. There's this luminous glow on her body. This was what was called a cabinet painting. And a cabinet was sort of a different word for, for a closet. Somebody would not have had this painting out hanging on their wall. It was like a secret sort of scandalous painting they might kept to themselves in a closet or someplace private. Um, uh, it was finally exhibited though in 1767. Diderot hated it. He criticized it. He thought it was really frivolous. Um, and, but it was another example of kind of um, sort of this very sexual picture of women, um, like the woman in the swing who maybe had two guys going at once and this woman undressed from her waist down. Um, women in these pictures were seen as very sexual, not particularly weighty figures, but um, uh, but very sexual and objects of lust. Um, this picture by Boucher is a little bit um, different in the sense that um, it's about it's a picture of Madame du Pompadour, um, who was a figure um, in uh, Enlightenment France. Um, and she uh, is at her toilette at her dressing table and she's got a little makeup brush there. Uh, Mama, Madame de Pompadour was a mistress of Louis um, the 16th. Um, and, um, but she also, and I think in this picture, uh, she's got a photograph of Louis 16th on her wrist. Um, uh, but one thing that's sort of interesting and surprising about her is she had a salon pushing forward enlightenment thinkers. She was uh, very bright. She educated herself, um, but she used the power of her beauty um, to uh, navigate the world. So this picture sort of captures how important her beauty and her dressing table was to her. But you can see she's also looking directly at the painter. She's got a very square, you know, she's looking squarely at the, um, at us, the viewer. Um, so not sort of as helpless and um, just sexual as the women in the other two pictures. Um, all right, so while this was all going on with Rococo, um, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see. There is actually, um, one way to think about, uh, the Rococo is it was kind of a party atmosphere at the courts and Rococo was sort of, um, an expression of that. Um, so while this was going on with Rococo, there were 
also painters creating more serious uh, paintings of the time and of uh, women in sort of noble positions, like in this painting by Eugene Delacroix, uh, there's uh, Liberty leading the people. And in this picture, Liberty is personified as a woman. Um, and she's strong and noble and courageous. Um, but then in this picture by, uh, called The Oath of the Horatii by Jacques-Louis David, um, this is based on uh, a story about Rome fighting with another city. And each city decides to send its three strongest men um, to, uh, to fight. And the father in this picture is giving his three sons their swords uh, to fight. And there are women in this picture, but as you might notice, they're not strong. They're not sexualized in any way, but they're sort of fainting at um, the idea of these men's courage. They're not encouraging the court. The men are standing up straight. You could almost like, uh, you know, uh, measure them with a ruler. The women are sort of slumped and weak um, and sort of just overwhelmed by the emotion of the scene. Um, so even though um, people like Jacques-Louis de David uh, were painting more serious scenes um, that included women um, during this period, um, the women are still generally not seen as very powerful, just like they weren't seen as very powerful in The Swing and in Odalisque. Um, so we're going to hear from de Gouge and Wollstonecraft um, their frustrations with the position of women in this society. Um, and uh, when you you know, read what de Gouge and Wollstonecraft say about the position of women, you might keep these images of women from art of the enlightenment in your mind to understand kind of what they're responding to. Let me see if there's anything else here I wanna to touch on. No, we're gonna talk about Wollstonecraft in uh, two videos from now, but that's just a little bit about enlightenment art. There are a couple other things you should look at this week, the article about the swing. There's a little video about the swing that will help flesh out your picture of the Rococo and um, what you need to know about enlightenment art to understand these thinkers.